We've been graphing linear equalities up to this point. Now, Total? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Things are going to be a little different. Life doesn't always come at you exactly equal to what you want. Usually it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. It's not equal. It's inequal. So we're going to look at look at graphing inequalities. Let's try and solve one inequality. We're going to graph an inequality. Okay. Now, as soon as I said the word graph, I hope you know. I always like you to, one way anyway, is to get y by itself. Well, let's see who's keeping y from being by itself. The 4x, which I'll subtract from both sides, and the 2 is right next to that y. He's multiplying, so I'll divide. Of course, I've got to divide everybody. And I get y is greater than 4 minus 2x. Now, how am I going to draw a picture of this? Well, up to this point, I only know how to do equalities. Welcome, Fantasy Island. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pretend that it is equal. It was greater, but I'm going to pretend it's equal. And then I, I know how to do it now. Remember, you make your chart, put in three points, put in three numbers, put in the easiest three. I'll put in 0. And let's see, 4 minus 2 times 0, 4 minus 0, I get 4. Okay, and I plot the point 0, 4. I put in one more. Let's put in 1 for x now. And apparently y would equal 2 in this case, 4 minus 2. And I'll plot that point over 1 and up 2. Let me put in, I always like to put in 3, just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Put in easy numbers. You can put in anything you want, so put in easy. The easiest three I know are 0, 1, and 2. So if I put in 2, I'll get 4 minus 4, or 0. And if I plot that point over 2 and up none, I know I'm very happy because I know they line up. Okay, that's what it would be if y equaled 4 minus 2x. I'd get that line. But remember, this is an inequality. Y doesn't equal 4 minus 2x. It's greater than 4 minus 2x. So here's how we're going to represent this. The line is where it equals. It's greater. If it includes the equals, like a greater than or equal or a less than or equal, then I will draw the line. But that's not the case here, is it? If it's just a greater and not equal, or just a less and not equal, I need to know where that line is but I'm not going to draw it. So what I'm going to do, you may remember, is put a dotted line. Then I got to represent all the points that are greater than that line, where y is greater. Where does y get greater? Above or below? Good thing you solved for y. y is greater, so okay. remember you shade above. Okay. Now, you know we're going to have to do a whole lot of these at the same time. So, let's look at a couple more examples. In this example, I've got a less than or equal to. Still going to start off the same way. Because I am going to graph, okay? I solve for y. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. And let's see, divide everybody by 3. Now, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 2 divided by 3 doesn't go in evenly, so I simply write 1 plus 2 divided by 3, or 2 thirds, we call it. Now, the reason I wanted to do this example is, of course, we're still going to pretend it's equals. I want you to think what you're going to put in. You can put in anything you want. We could put in 0, 1, and 2. We could do that, but it might make might make life easier here if you put in multiples of 3 because it'll cancel out the fraction. So just consider that. Always try to make life easier for you. You'll have less errors. So I'm going to put in 0, 3, and negative 3. I could put 0, 3, and 6, but either one is fine. If I put in a 0, the second term will cancel and I'll get a 1. And there's a nice point. Go over 0 and up 1. Okay, let's put in the 3. 
and you'll see that the threes will cancel and I'll get one plus two or three. I happen to get out of three. So I'll go over three and up three and I have another point. Now remember what I always tell you, always do three points because you could have made a mistake. So I'm going to put in another multiple of three, negative three. Now the threes will cancel but the negative won't. So I'll have negative two and I'll have to add one to that and I get a negative one. Remember how to graph that? Go back three and down one. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I can see they do in fact line up. Okay, now let's, we, we've been in a fantasy world here with the equality. Remember how this problem began? It was a y is less than or equal to. And if it's or equal to, if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, we're going to draw a solid line. If it's just greater than or less than, we don't want to include the line, so we do a dotted. But this time, I believe we do want to include the line, so we draw it. And then lastly, we have to decide a shade above or below. Once again here, it's good that we solved for y. y is less. Where does y get less? It's either above or below. really doesn't take a genius to figure this one out. Just go down. Okay, look down and shade below. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Let's do another one. Some of these get tricky. Okay, I'll give you a crazy one, for instance. And this one, oh, same thing. How are we going to begin? I said the graph. Okay, who's keeping y from being alone? Minus 3, and that's multiplying, so I'll do the opposite. I'll divide. Now remember, in these problems, these inequalities, when you divide a by a negative number, you're required to flip the sign. Maybe you forgot that. And that sign's important. So we'll flip it, and we'll get y is greater than 2. Okay, let's get 3 points. I'm going to pretend y is equal to 2, just like I did before. And I don't have any fractions here, so what am I going to put in? Don't make life easy for yourself. You don't have any fractions. Don't need multiples of anything. Just put in 0, 1, and 2. Don't, don't make it difficult. And this one's kind of so easy it's hard. If I put in a 0 for x, hmm, there isn't an x. If I put in a 0, well, it told me y is 2. So y is 2, Dagnabbit. Over 0 and up 2. This one's like I said, so easy it's hard. If I use 1 and I don't have any work to do, it says y is 2. Y is always 2 is the deal. Over 1 and up 2. And here's where you're glad you did 3 points. Because here again, y is going to be 2. And if I go over 2 and up 2, I'm betting you feel a lot better about that because you can see they line up. The only trouble you have now is you have to decide, and it's not hard, is it solid or dotted? Well, it isn't or equal to, so I'm going to draw the solid or the dotted line. And y is greater, so we just shade above. And that's the answer. Okay? Let's do one very last inequality. How about this one? This is a little bit tricky. I want you to solve, but there isn't a y. Hmm, now you can sit here for a half hour if you want to. You can't solve for y because there isn't one. So we don't have too many options here. Do what you can, that's all you can do. Okay, so you're going to have to solve for x in this case. We're going to divide by 2. Note on this one that we're not going to flip the sign. We didn't divide by a negative. We didn't bring trouble to the problem. It was already there. So we're not going to flip the sign. And we'll have x is greater than negative 1. Now let's see. We're going to pretend x is equal to negative 1. I'm doing this example for a reason. What can I put in for x here? I said x is negative 1. Listen to me now. x is negative 1. What can I put in for x? Negative 1. That's all you can put in. Okay? 
The neat thing is you get to pick any Y. There's no restrictions on Y. This is a little bit weird, isn't it? That's why I'm going over it. Well, if I get to pick, I'm going to pick 0, 1, and 2. That point negative 1, 0. Back 1 and up none. The point negative 1, 1. And the point negative 1, 2. Ah. Now all we have to decide first is it solid or dotted. Now remember this one's going to be dotted because it's not or equal to. Now this one you can't shade above or below but remember we're not talking about y we're talking about x. Where does x get greater considering your only options are left and right? Well x gets greater Genius. to the That's right and that is your answer. Okay, and that's, that's about as weird as it gets. Now some of these are not going to be easy to solve for y. And many of them, many of them are going to look like this. They're going to be in what we call standard form, where the right side is a constant. Remember that? Where we had the coefficients on the left side and the constant on the right. Some of them are going to look like that. And there is a, a, another method that I think is worthwhile for you to learn. And that's using intercepts. Remember that the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. 0 is easy to work with. And the x-intercept occurs when y is equal to 0. So those are two easy points. Maybe I could get those. I'm going to get the y-intercept by putting a 0 in for x. Nicely, the uh, 0 term with the 2 will cancel out. And I'll be able to get y very easily. Dividing by 3, y will be 2, because I canceled. So put the y-intercept, 0, 2. I really only need one more point if you think about it. And that's going to be the x-intercept. Now the x-intercept occurs when y is 0. So I'll put a 0 in for y. Good old zeros, easy to work with. The term with the 0 will cancel out. And now all I have to do is divide by negative 2. You love 0. That'll cancel, and x in this case will be negative 3. So I have what we call the x-intercept, or the point negative 3, 0. And I know where the line is. To infinity and beyond. I also know, in this case, that it's a solid line. The hard part, when I do it this way, is deciding do I shade above or below. Because I really haven't, you see, solved for y. y gets bigger above and smaller below. The trick to this is to use, once again, use the zero trick. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to look at, look at the point, I'm going to shade one of these sides. Look at the point zero, zero. I pick zero, zero because it's easy to work with. The point zero, 0, I'm going to use it as what we call a test point. Of course, I'm going to put 0 in for x and 0 in for y. And what is that going to be? 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0, every time it's going to be. Now, is this statement true? Is 0 less than or equal to 6? If it is true, then that blue point is part of the correct shading. If it isn't true, then that blue point is not part of the correct shading, and I should shade on the other side. In this case, 0 is less than or equal to 6, so the blue point is included in the correct shading, and that means it tells me which side to shade. You are correct, sir. I should shade the uh, side below where the, where the blue point is. And that's my answer. Okay, so use the point 0, 0, or any point. The reason I use 0, 0 is because it was easy to work with. Okay? Okay, go do that homework.